I mean, honestly, just the fact that mouth lesions and bruising were enough of an issue that someone decided to create this instead of solving the root issue is ridiculous and should 100% be seen as a wake-up call. Welcome or welcome back. If you haven't seen me before, my name's Kat, I'm an equestrian and a dog mom, and I'm basically obsessed with the animals. And no oh boy, do we need to talk. <laughs> Today we are going to be talking about what is potentially one of the biggest wastes of money in the equestrian world, and what is probably one of the worst, dumbest, just most mind-boggling product that I have ever seen or heard of. I do just want to say before we get into today's video that this video is not intended as hate towards anyone or any company. My sole intention is to share data and knowledge and help raise the standard for equine welfare. So don't sue me because this is free speech. Hey guys, it is Future Cat here and I just wanted to clarify a few things before you continue watching the rest of this video. In this video, I am very angry, I am very heated, and that is not usually the kind of energy that I like to bring to my videos or to my channel, and that is something that I will work to improve on uh, moving forward if I continue to, you know, review or talk about certain products. But I wanted to clarify that my anger and my frustration in this video is not aimed directly at the people at ProTech or the people who developed this product. It is more so aimed at the overarching, just kind of overgeneralization of the group of the equestrians who think that this kind of thing is the solution to the problem. And I'll get more into why I don't believe that it is the solution further on in the video. I also don't think that, you know, saying worst or dumbest product is something that I should have said, but unfortunately that clip is important to transition into the following clip, which is why I left it in. I don't say worst in the sense of it doesn't work, because I'm sure it does. I'm sure that it does actually prevent bit-related injuries. Um, but I say worst in the sense of the idea of why we created it when that is not what we should be doing to solve the issue. And the same goes for me saying dumbest. Again, I was very heated and I apologize for that. Moving forward, I'm going to try to bring more of a uh, chill and respectable energy to videos like this. Um, but again, just keep in mind that my anger is not directed straight at ProTech or the people at ProTech um, because they are only a very, very small percentage of the population of equestrians who um, tend to take the band-aid type route when it comes to solving equine related health and safety issues. So now with that out of the way, you can get on to the rest of the video. So if you have not already seen the ProTech Equine Mouth Guard, you're lucky. <laughs> um, but go go look it up. And if you have already, then hopefully you had the same reaction I did. Well, not my initial reaction. My initial reaction was kind of unfortunate and funny. I first saw this thing on my TikTok for you page and um, the video was from the company's TikTok and I didn't actually watch it all the way through because I was running late for something. Um, so I saved it to watch it later. But what I did see was unbox a horse mouth guard with me. And honestly, my initial reaction when I saw this was is this like orthodontics for horses? Like, is this like a, a retainer of some kind? Like, I was really hoping that this was some sort of groundbreaking orthodontic veterinary technology for horses to help with horses with dental issues. I could not have been more wrong. <laughs> Reading straight from the homepage on their website, four years of meticulous research led us to ProTech, an innovative protection designed to minimize horse bit injuries. We developed the solution by actively listening to riders who explain to us how they find it difficult to really connect with their horses' mouths despite up-to-date dental care. What do you think connection is? We spent many hours observing and analyzing mouth movements. We found out that the area where the bit works is very, very sensitive. We knew that already. Repeated and excessive rubbing can cause inflammation. That is how tissue works. Lesions may be small, but sometimes they can be quite serious and trigger many other physical issues. Mouth sensitivity may also intensify during competitions because of the use of specific, more precise bits with different modes of action. AKA more harsh bits or using harsher bits. So this is why we developed this product and made sure that it would be used in all circumstances, training and competing. Of course, we also made sure it would fit all mouths and bits. So essentially the point of this product is to help prevent lesions and bruising from bits 
And I've watched pretty much all of the videos that ProTech has on like their YouTube and their Instagram and their TikTok. And it's full of a bunch of these, what I think are pro riders. Um, I've never heard of these people, but they're probably pro riders. And they, they're all talking about how they've had problems getting proper contact and how they can't really connect with their horse's mouths with, and so they use the mouth guard and it makes it better, which I'm assuming what they mean is they can't get the proper contact without causing problems because putting something between the bit and the mouth is not going to give you better contact, which begs the question, how heavy are you on your horse's mouth? And honestly, you know what? I'm just going to say this straight up. Like I, I typically try to be pr pretty like sensitive to different people and like I don't want to like cause drama or be like one of those people that every equestrian hates. But if your horse has lesions and bruising from the bit and this is happening often enough that you want to drop $752 on this piece of plastic, the solution is not a mouth guard, okay? The solution should be one of the following. Have a vet check out your horse's dentition. They may have a problem with their teeth or you know what? They may actually have a problem with their jaw alignment, in which case you might want to see a chiropractor or a body worker to help with that because horses hold a lot of tension in their jaws because a lot of horses have anxiety. And just like people, horses hold uh, tension in their jaw when they're anxious because they clench their jaw. And this can affect how the bit sits in their mouth. Number two, work on your riding because if you can't get proper proper contact with your horse's mouth without enough force that you're causing bruising and lesions the problem is the prob the, the the problem is not the is the problem is you okay i'm sorry i don't know how to be any nicer about that and i'm not saying that i'm like the best rider out here i'm not not by any means but if i am ever putting enough force on a horse's mouth from the bit that i'm causing bruising and lesions, then I need to work on something else because clearly my hands are a problem. If your hands are so heavy that you're causing pain to your horse or you're causing behavioral issues due to the pain that your horse is feeling, you need to work on your riding. This is not meant to hate on anybody's riding. Like God knows I'm not the best rider in the world, but if you are a pro rider and you are having this issue, you're having a contact issue because you can't apply enough pressure without causing issues in your horse's mouth, then the problem is you're riding. It's it's either a it's a it's a training issue or it's a you issue. If you are riding professionally, like this is this is how you make a living, you should be able to ride effectively with light contact. Check the fit of your bit. Your bit might not fit right. Try a different bit. That bit might not work for your horse. Not every bit works for every horse. It's not a one size fits all kind of thing. Try bitless. I don't want to be one of those people who's like pushing bitless onto everybody because I will admit that bitless is not the answer for everybody. You can cause more damage in a hackamore with heavy hands than with light hands on a snaffle. But if like if you want to say like, oh well, you know, I have light hands and, and my bit's not harsh, my horse just has a really, really sensitive mouth and so anything will cause issues in the mouth and so I need the mouth guard, your horse should probably go bitless. If their mouth is that sensitive, you probably shouldn't be putting anything in their mouth. Now, I've watched the YouTube video on the ProTech Equestrian YouTube channel where they show you how to put in the mouth guard. And what it looks like is that the noseband is what keeps this thing in place. And so you can imagine how tight you would have to have the noseband to keep it sitting there. And in the video, it says that you should be able to fit in two fingers. And if it's a smaller horse, only one. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think this guy can fit any fingers in there. Like, you can see the tension wrinkles on this horse's face. Like, you can see how how he's having to push how he's having to push this band to be able to tighten it and we know that there are negative effects associated with riding horses in tight nose bands recent studies have showed us that horses actually experience physiological stress when they're ridden in a nose band that is too tight we see significant shifts in heart rate and in eye temperature and all of these different stress markers which suggests that horses experience pain and discomfort when the nose band is too tight to the point where you can't fit anything underneath and, and this is all even without reins and a rider. Think about how it would be worse with reins and a rider added on. If a horse can't yawn, lick, and chew properly with a noseband, like with a bridle on, with the noseband on, it is too tight. We know that with nosebands that are too tight, we see very, very little yawning, licking, chewing, any of the mouth behaviors that horses do regularly and that help them release tension. Preventing them from doing those things is not only mean, but it is going to help keep their body in a tenser state and in a higher state of anxiety. And this one study literally said, on ethical grounds, 
The use of relentless pressure to eliminate oral behaviors in pursuit of a competitive advantage may be difficult to justify. I will also say that in every photo and video I've seen of a horse using this mouth guard, every single one of them is wearing a flash. Now, I don't know if you need a flash to keep the mouth guard in place. It, it doesn't say anything about that on the website. So my assumption is that all of the horses that happen to be using it just also need a flash. And generally a flash is used to help keep a horse's mouth closed over the bit, which I have a problem with in general because for a flash to be effective, they have to be pretty tight. But if your horse needs the mouth guard because of bruisings and lesions and they also need a flash already to keep their mouth shut over the bit, maybe there's a different problem. Anyways, my point here is that I'm just astounded that anyone would put the money into making this. Like, all the mouth guard does is puts a barrier between the crazy amount of pressure that you have in your bit and their mouth. You should not, like, you should not be putting that much pressure on a horse's mouth or face at all when you're riding. Like, with all of the videos of the riders that I've seen who are advertising this thing, saying that they, that they really like it because they had a problem getting contact, or like getting proper contact, getting good contact. What do you think contact is? Like, you're not gonna get better contact with a horse's mouth adding in a mouth guard because that's putting something between the bit, AKA your hands and the horse's mouth. So I'm assuming you mean you can't get the proper contact without causing issues. Why do you need that much pressure to get proper contact? Like, people talk about like, contact is just such a, this like abstract thing like if you can feel their mouth in your hands you've got contact i mean honestly just the fact that mouth lesions and bruising were enough of an issue that someone decided to create this instead of solving the root issue is ridiculous and should 100 percent be seen as a wake-up call that instead of solving welfare issues we were putting band-aids on them and marketing them as welfare improvements now, I don't actually think that the ProTech people or the people at this uh, company or any of the riders that are promoting them, for that matter, are bad people. I don't think that at all. I think they genuinely want to help horses and I think they think that they're doing a good thing, but they're just really going about it in the wrong way. I think they genuinely care about horses, but I think they are very misguided. So please, 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 if you are dealing with issues with your horse that make you think that maybe you need a mouth guard or something like that for them, please talk to your vet first. Go through the laundry list of things that I went over that could have been an issue because I guarantee you that one of those things is gonna help before a mouth guard is. Anyways, this is one of my current issues with the equine world, with the equine industry. I have many issues with the equine industry, of course. This is just one of my current frustrations. Anyways, guys, that is it for today. Let me know what you think down in the comments and if there are any other equine or canine products that you would like me to talk about, let me know. And please use your brains before just assuming that something like this is a solution. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's video, maybe leave a like and hit subscribe. I hope you have a great day and please think critically.